<laughs> ah, sorry. All I can do is laugh, man. Um, what's going on, Warriors? Lionheart, I'm here. Uh, we're not gonna waste time, man. Black Panther. So, two. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a spoiler-free review for the first minute of this video starting from now so Black Panther how can I say this movie spoiler free review I give this movie a 10 out of 10 it is an absolute perfect movie the pacing the story the characters every single character was flushed out except the Queen of Wakanda yeah that she was like them Angela Bassett's character. She was the only character that I felt kind of got ab abandoned to a certain degree. And you didn't know what did she bring to the table. I didn't really feel her character too much. But she still was a very good character. Wonderful character. Um, yeah. The movie was excellent. It had good action. It had good story. Um, beginning, a middle and an end. It was more of a character driven story than an action movie. Right? And in times I actually forgot I was watching a Marvel movie. You know, because it was just so about the character and what he had to do for his country. And it was a lot of kind of world and social issues and historical issues that was brought up in this movie right uh, so yeah I'd definitely say you have to watch this movie it is an excellent incredible movie and um, yeah as I say I give it a 10 out of 10 so sorry that was a little bit longer than a minute but um, yeah so I'll say thank you for watching thank you for tuning in and that is it for my spoiler free review you can stick around because in about 10 seconds, I'm about to do my complete review. So, that's free, that was 10 seconds. If you're still here, thank you. Warriors, how you doing guys? Uh, I'm feeling good. Fresh, happy, blessed. Oh, the Black Panther. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. That is the best Marvel movie ever. Best Marvel movie. Right? Um, so to this day, right, to me personally, the top three Marvel movies was at number three, Iron Man. Sorry. Winter Soldier. Iron Man 1. And then Civil War. That was my top three. Now that has changed. Black Panther is number one. Civil War is number two. And Iron Man 1 is number three. That's my top three Marvel movies. Three. This movie is godlike. Now let me explain when I give this movie a 10 out of 10. So let's say for Ragnarok. I gave that movie a 10 out of 10. When I give things ratings, it's to do with my my enjoyment and feeling of fulfillment during that movie. For Ragnarok, did have issues. It was very jokey, right? Uh, the pacing wasn't the greatest, right? But from beginning to end, I felt happy. I enjoyed myself. And for that reason, I can ignore... All the issues and continuances, it, continuances that it had. Thus, 10 out of 10. This movie is a 10 out of 10 for a different reason. It's a 10 out of 10 because the character, T'Challa, was incredible. I understand why he's the main character. I completely understand it. He gives the, the film a foundation, everything evolves around that character, whether he's in the scene or not, you feel the presence of T'Challa, the Black Panther, you feel it even when he's not there, 
right? Um, what is it? The Dormelage Okuye. I don't know what to say right now. Okuye? The Dormelage? Stole the show. They stole the show because I was always focusing on Black Panther. What I did not expect was Eric Killmonger. Um, Okuye. I did not expect those characters to be so godlike. I did not expect it. I was just blown away by that character. Um, Okuye and Eric Killmonger. Those were like the most godlike characters in the show. Free. Free! Um, Eric, so the thing is about that, the movie, right, was there were certain elements about the film that I actually loved. Right, well, I loved everything about the movie, but whenever I was getting super hype about it, something would ground me, right? Like, um, Eric Killmonger, his character is, um, at first it seemed like a very basic character. He's just a bad guy that's trying to take down the Black Panther and wants to take everything on. Yeah, we all know his story, yeah? But the thing is, his character is way more deeper than... It would allow you to think his character is. Because his motivation was so amazing. Because you got Wakanda. And they're like, we are the most um, powerfulest, richest, technologically advanced um, country in the world. The most advanced continent in the entire world. And what Eric Killmonger does is he poses a question. You've had all this power, all this tech for so long. Where have you been? Where have you been? When black people needed you. When black people are getting killed and oppressed. Killed by the police. But put into bondage, slavery, for no reason, basically, other than they didn't look like everybody else. They looked different just because of the colour of their skin. That's the only reason that they got oppressed and treated like they were nothing. You had all this technology, you had all this power. Where were you? Where were you? You could have empowered the people that were suffering. You could have done that. But they didn't. They didn't. And that's what's interesting. Because then you got Black Panther saying. They're not my people. Wakanda. They are my people. Right. And then Killmonger uh, posed a question. So. People around the world. Are being oppressed. Because they are like you. Right. They're not your people. Because when they, when they say your people, it's referring to the oppression, basically, of people that are being oppressed just because they look like you. The reason they're getting oppressed is because of the colour of their skin, right? So if you were there, they would oppress you too. So because it's not happening to you, it means that it's not your suffering, right? That's what that means, yeah? Now, Killmonger wants to fight for the people. Now, he is an extremist, yeah? That was my issue with him. He was an extremist. He went too far, right? But he was still an amazing character. And to be honest with you, the only issue I had was his extremism. His idea, his ideology was amazing. But he got warped by his reality. Warped by the fact that his dad, which was he wasn't in it for long. But he was godlike. It was like um, in Star Trek. You know the new Star Trek? Um, James Kirk's dad, basically, in the first movie, he was he it was basically four. Yeah, you know the guy that played four? Um, Hemworth, something Hemworth, right? He played um I think it's James Kirk's dad in that movie. He was in it for a very short time. But the little time he was in it, he made a massive impact. It was the same thing like Killmonger's dad. He was in it for a short time, but it was a it was massive. Because in this movie, he worked with 
who, he worked with that character Claw. Yeah, Ulysses Claw. Basically, he used Ulysses Claw to steal vibranium, and he was going to use that to help the black people across the world. He got killed before then, right? But I feel the plan was basically to once they got that vibranium. Then they were, gonna go, they were gonna get rid of Claw because Claw was just a conduit. He was a medium to help them achieve a goal, right? He already got found out by King T'Chaka, the then Black Panther, right? And things came to a head and he got killed, right? And then they abandoned Killmonger, yeah, when he was a kid, right? So they did, they, they basically killed him off. Right, didn't give him a fair trial, then abandoned the boy. So you could see how he got warped. And Killmonger already knew about Wakanda. He already knew about Vibrillium. He already knew about they were technologically advanced. So he's growing up, yeah, in the streets of Harlem, on his own. Then that's what how he became um in the army. And then he became a black ops, like a specialist in um assassinations and um Covert operations and destabilizing um, countries and fuel fanning the flames of war. Right, he basically became super warped. Right, I mean, let's talk for the comics just for a little bit. I don't want to talk about the comics too much, but I just want to make a reference. So basically, with Killmonger, he actually went back to Wakanda and lived there for a while, destabilizing Wakanda before he challenged. T'Challa, right? Because he could not use... They knew who he was in the comics. But he could never use the heart-shaped herb, right? Because it rejected him. Yeah? Um, yeah, he just couldn't use it. He couldn't use it, yeah? It, it will basically kill you, yeah, if you use it. Because the heart-shaped herb, they... They make it like it's a... Like a magical item, right? But it's actually not. It's basically a... A special herb, right, that is in Africa, but it was mutated by Vibrillium, right? So that's what it actually is. It's a basically a very rare herb that is mutated by Vibrillium. It said you can only absorb it if you are of the royal family and you have noble and um, noble and loyal blood. Um, no, noble and Worthy, if basically if you're worthy, like Force Hammer, basically. But that's not the case. It's just a simple case of if you're godlike enough, if you have the will and your body accepts it, you can take the heart shaped herb, right? It's no magical thing about it. But they made it into a magical thing, which I appreciate. And it's the way they've done it is sick because it's the Marvel universe, right? So he created a the synthetic herb took all that, that all that stuff out because that's long yeah and Killmonger is actually weaker than T'Challa for the simple fact that he uses a synthetic herb that he he created himself because he's a he's very smart basically and uh, he, he went to the same school as um Tony Stark um graduated from MIT he's like proper smart and super strong right um yeah, so, uh, yeah, I didn't want to make too much. I just wanted to give you a tiny little bit of backstory in case you didn't know that about Killmonger. Yeah, but in this one, they did it a little bit different. They sped the process up because T'Challa knows about the history of um, T'Chaka, his cousin, basically, because Killmonger's his cousin, essentially. Yeah, and he gave him a fair shake, right? And it wasn't proper. Black Pepper wasn't, wasn't fighting properly, right? Because... He was very conflicted about the fact that they failed Killmonger. They failed him, right? But Killmonger, he won. He won fair and square, technically, because the fight wasn't over, right? When T'Challa came back, right? But even before that, yeah, um, just the, the ethical and the moral compass that Killmonger... Hits you with. 
that the fact what he hits you with about the fact that you had all this tech and you didn't help the people that needed you. That just... It just shuts you up, man. Because then T'Challa was like, we don't get involved in world issues. We keep ourselves to ourselves. We stay in ourselves. The world stays to itself. But I don't know, man. That's no better than Brexit. That's no better than what's going on in America right now, right? You can say that, but in a way you can't because it was other it was um other races basically that built up countries like the UK. It was um America was built up by other races, right? Um it was originally belonged to Native Americans. But they got this, they got murdered out and just robbed of their own country and oppressed, right? So it's a little bit different because Wakanda was built, harnessed, and thrived from themselves with no outside help, right? So it's a little bit different. But the fact that they are not prepared to accept people. It just makes you think to yourself, in saying that and agreeing to that, are you no better than what is going on in the world right now with people not wanting to accept people from other countries and other continents and other places, right? And it just it just makes you think, right? So as well as the movie being godlike, like so amazing, like the, the culture, the African culture, the African music... It was so beautiful, the dancing. And it wasn't just like one part of Africa. It was, um, you saw cultures of like Togo and Cameroon and Nigeria and Ghana and Morocco and um, even um, of, of, of um, Egypt. It was so amazing, right, in terms of the different cultures and um, clothes. It was just beautiful. And the acting. Well, we knew this before the film started, actually. Right? Because you got, as I say, Chadwick Boseman. Dawn. Yeah? And um, you got Lupita. Um, Lupita. You got uh, Michael B. Jordan. You got uh, Danny. Um, I can't remember her name. You have, um, what's that guy's name called again? He was... Andy Circus, you know, you had um, so many different characters in that movie, man. Um, actors, like the acting level was amazing. It was just, you just can't believe the act, the, um, you know, the cast, right? So before it was even going to be, you thought it was going to be an amazing film because it's Black Panther. The cast told you there's no way. That this cannot be a good film. So only the director could fuck it up. You know, let's be honest with you. Because when you've got three, when you've got a whole, a plethora of incredible actors, that takes so much weight off of the director. So he could just be on next levels thinking of how he can be creative instead of managing bad actors or character actors that are not completely invested in the work that they're doing right um yeah Ulysses Claw that character was godlike he was a proper villain he was a proper villain in this movie and how he got Dead? I thought that was amazing. The fact that he got killed off by Eric Killmonger. That was sick. The betrayal. That was the betrayal that his dad, I feel, I feel his dad was going to do, but he got killed before he got to implement that. So it's literally history repeating itself. You know, but Eric got there. He betrayed him this um, himself this time, right? Um... So this movie wasn't really an action film, but it did have a lot of action, right? Like, there was a mission where they went to try to capture Ulysses Claw, 
right? Um, and it was like an arms deal because he stole a bit of vibranium. He was going to sell it. Um, that scene where you saw Okuye fighting in the club. She, the woman was like Diana Prince, man. She was like Wonder Woman. That character was too much. She was too much. She was too much. And they gave her one of Black Panther's sickest weapons. Basically, because Black Panther's got these um, these boots, basically. And it allows him to walk on water, walk on walls, um, jump from super heights, and all this kind of crazy stuff, yeah. But he never had it in this movie. They gave it to Okuye instead. Okuye, the greatest warrior in Wakanda. That is amazing. And she's the general of an army. That is godlike. Not only is she a woman, but she's a black woman who has such an incredibly powerful role, high level role. You can't fuck with her. I'm so happy. I'm so happy with that movie. Yeah, it's Shuri, a Black Panther T'Challa's sister, the, t the basic the, the Tony Stark of that movie. Brilliant. Funny, um, natural. She, it looked like she was having fun. Oh, good acting, man. The movie was just the best. It was just the best. It was it. The film made me happy. I. It was fun. Uh, it was. It filled me with happiness and pride and joy. It was just. Wonderful! It was so good. It was such a good movie. I didn't even feel like I was watching a Marvel movie. That's how good the film was. It was a, It felt like a standalone movie. It did have references to what happened in Civil War, right? Um, you know, with uh, King T'Chaka dying and basically T'Challa having to fulfill, become the king of Wakanda. You know, and his issues with rising to that. You know, um, taking care of his people, um, being a politician, managing people, um, you know, um, his his love, basically, Nakia, right? But she has a different set of issues. This woman is another person who is next levels. Her intention, basically, is she can't stay in Wakanda. Because she wants to help the black people in the outside world that are being oppressed. And that's the reason she feels like she can't stay in Wakanda. Because Wakanda wants to keep themselves to themselves. Where she says, I can't do that. I can't ignore the people suffering out there. I can't do it. I can't stay here in shelter safety. While I know my people are being killed. By racist police officers. They're being um, injustice. The justice system is failing them. Right? Um, they're not given opportunities. I, can, I can't save the world. But I can save anyone that comes across my way. It's so cool. It's so cool. The concept of that. So it, 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 it basically makes you question your moral compass right man that movie was just wonderful and the technology with and I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you the black panther suit i didn't really like it i liked the one from civil war yeah but i didn't like this new one you know that could have like that kinetic charge thing right um but yeah it is what it is i hope the next movie they do a new suit right uh, but yeah Movie was incredible, man. There was like you had car chase scenes, you had cool fight scenes, and uh, the Dumalage fighting, Black Panther fighting. Um, he didn't seem as overpowered as he was in Civil War because in Civil War he was overpowered. But then again, a lot of people were overpowered, you know, in Civil War. Let's be honest, right? So they feel like they toned him down, but they had to, right? Just because of what was at stake, and he was more dealing with people. And everything like that. So every time he would fight. Basically to defend his throne. They would have to power him down. Like take away the power of the uh, his superhuman ability. Right. Basically because it's very very honourable. Right. 
So they could just let him have the hope shape of the power of the Black Panther, superhuman strength, superhuman agility, um, enhanced vision, enhanced sight, um, superhuman reactions, superhuman strength, all that kind of good stuff, right? But then it wouldn't be fair. So he has to fight as a normal human being to prove his worth, and I like that, right? This movie was just perfect. A wonderful, it was a beautiful movie. It was actually beautiful. Right, the film had no flaws. There was zero flaws in the entire movie. The one thing that I was pissed about, if I'm being absolutely honest, was Eric Killmonger dying. Right, because I tried not to like him, because he was opposing Black Panther, and he took away from the Black Panther, and he, you know he beat the Black Panther and everything like that. And it looked like he killed him. Yeah, um, but he was just too good. He was too good. His ideal, right was too wonderful his ideal his goal was just too it was too good that like i could not hate him for it he was warped um he wasn't very extreme but look he got failed he got failed by his own people you know there's what else can you do nothing you know and another thing that was great about this movie is for the very first time they showed us the astral plane. They've never shown us the astral plane in the Marvel Universe ever because of X-Men. They can't use the word mutants. They haven't used um, the X-Men. They haven't can't use the astral plane. Although they can use the astral plane with Doctor Strange. But they never did. Right. But now, in this movie, they actually displayed... It was incredible. They displayed the astral plane. Um, yeah. B brilliant movie. I definitely recommend you go watch this film. Um, there was... Yeah. Cast was amazing. Music was incredible. Right? Um, the cast. So, I don't want to say anything bad about the movie, man. But I have to call a spade a spade. The CG wasn't that great. That's all I can say. That's, if, I could, if I had to nitpick one thing, I'd say the CG wasn't the best I've seen in a Marvel film. But other than that, perfect 10. Wonderful. Um, I'm going to watch the movie again. Um, the soundtrack, I'm listening to the soundtrack right now. I don't know if I'm going to buy it. I want to buy it. The only issue that I have with it at the moment is the music that I'm listening on the soundtrack is not in the movie. So, um, I want the soundtrack, the score, right? But the, the soundtrack isn't the score. And I like the score in the movie. So why isn't there a soundtrack? Why doesn't the soundtrack that Kendrick Lamar produced or whatever don't have the music from the movie, the score? I don't know. I don't understand it. But whatever. What would I know? <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's um, me um, reviewing the Black Panther, telling you what I thought about it. I thought the movie was absolutely incredible. If I had, I can't, basically. But if you if you um, cornered me and told me I had to pick an MVP of this movie, it'd be Okuye, right? Um, Killmonger's ethic was incredible. But the way he went about it wasn't the greatest. It was... You know, it was very sinister. I didn't like it, but you had to because he was a villain. But I felt for him. That was the thing that kept on conflicting me in the movie. It was it was testing my moral compass. It made me think about a lot of issues in the world. And how would I decide and how would what would I make the choice about? And, you know, so it was just so many things in that movie. And it was it was hella funny. It was hella funny. Um... There were certain jokes in there that basically you could only understand from a black person's perspective, right? Well, not all black people, but if you are raised in a traditional African household, you will understand that, right? Um, or a Jamaican. Um, okay, what well, I'll give you an example, right? So... One of my friends, basically, um, she said she said to me, and because she will just use some swear words, yeah, like the c word, yeah, and basically she said the reason she's for me it's offensive, 
yeah? Because I wasn't born, I wasn't raised in a household that used the C word so freely, so easily, yeah? Never used that word. But in her household, they used it a lot. It was commonplace to the point where it's not actually a disrespectful term or it's not a disgusting term, right? Which is weird for me, so I have to let her say it because it's, it's her, right? And she's my friend. The same thing where in um, an African household where basically I was raised, right? Uh, there's certain characteristics and mannerisms and ways of acting and talking that only I'm familiar with. And Black Panther has that. So there's certain elements, basically, that I recognise in that movie. And there's certain conversations that you can only understand from a black person's perspective. But it's still, you can still understand it even if you're not black. Right, because you have your own culture, and if you are smart and your eyes are open, you can interpret that in your own culture, and then you understand where they're coming from, right, and what their meaning is behind that, you know. So it's just a very deep movie, man, a very amazing movie. Um, it's historical, right, because there's never been a movie with such a massive black cast, right. That is wonderful actors, incredible movie, no bullshit, no disrespect, just amazing. Black excellence, wonderful black music, black people being represented properly, no stereotype, just being fucking normal. Just being fucking normal. Good, bad, in between, the latter, normal different perspectives just fucking normal it was beautiful it was actually beautiful no propaganda to try to make themselves look better than they actually are by downgrading somebody else so basically making somebody else look bad to make yourself look good you know what I mean? No other cultures were disrespected or no other race of people were disrespected to make Black Panther and their um, culture look better. No, it was just literally a celebration of who and what they are. And that is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because the reason it's so wonderful is because for a, a long time, basically, the world's not seen that. The world, lots of time in social media, they portray uh, black culture as maybe something that is negative, right? Or not good or whatever, right? So basically, this movie is literally just displaying what it is. That is it. It's just displaying what it is. There's no propaganda. Beautiful. Beautiful. There's nothing I can say more than that. Right, it's just a, an incredible movie. And this should be the beginning of more. This should be the beginning of more. Right, I want to see more movies like this for other cultures as well. Right, where they're just, where other cultures are just represented correctly. You know, they're given a, a platform, a stage to just do it. And just be great. You know, it's truly happy to be alive to see this it's so good thank you well done well done um ryan coogler um chad um chad boseman uh chadwick boseman um everybody marvel uh great i'm so happy i am proud Wonderful movie. You definitely go want to see it. I gave it a 10. I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. I'm going to watch it again. And you, you have to watch it. If you don't watch it. The one thing I will say about this movie is. No Infinity Gem. Right? Because they still have. I, mean, I don't know which gem. I think it's the Soul Stone. There is a gem that has not been shown yet. In the Marvel Universe. Right, so I'm thinking maybe Fabrillion. 
they're going to say the meteorite that crashed into Wakanda, the source of it, is the soul gem? I don't know. But, I don't know. So it was a bit strange. And there was a hidden ending. I think there was two. I can't remember, actually. One was with um, Bucky. Yeah, Bucky Barnes. He was in it. Like, they've actually woken him from the cold sleep. Um, sorry, him being on ice. And they're training him up. And it clearly looks like the... The way, what how they programmed him has been erased. Like, they've completely cured his brain. So he's no longer an assassin. He can no longer be um, mind-controlled or anything like that. Uh, and was there a... Was there... There was two... Man, I can't remember if there was a second one. That's, that's the only one I can remember. Maybe there was a second head, um, two headed endings. I can only remember one. But yeah, if I remember the other one, I'll put it in the comment section when we're having a little talk. So, Warriors, that's me going on about the Black Panther. Um, you know, I had to go in on this, yeah, because this is Black Panther. Um, you know, for my reaction video, we had like 4,000 views, almost 5,000 views and stuff like that about my reaction to Black Panther. Um, so this is just, um, it surpassed my expectation. It surpassed it. I thought I was going to get an action movie of Black Panther just kicking ass, but it wasn't that. It was better. It was actually a beautiful character-driven movie. Black Panther did kick some ass, but it was all about the characters. It was all about Killmonger, um, um, Shuri, um, Nakia, Okuye, um, the Kingdom of Wakanda, um, even Ulysses Claw. Just humans, you know, being a decent fucking human being. What does it mean to be a decent human being? What does it mean to help people, right? Just, um... Are you a good person? Or, you know, what defines good or bad? Is there such a thing as good or bad? Or is it just a difference of perspective? Where you are standing, right? Um, yeah. Brilliant movie. I could go on forever, right? So I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching and stick with me this long. Um, I want to hear what you guys think. In the comment section, please, let's talk about this because this is massive. If you've watched it, great. If you haven't watched it, I don't know why you'd be watching, you'd still be here at this point if you haven't watched it because you would have had a lot of stuff spoiled for you, which I don't want, right? Um, but, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, we'll hear what you guys got to say. What do you think of the other um, villages within Wakanda? There was a, a certain type of civil war within Wakanda. What did you think of that? What did you think about the war in Wakanda at the end? Um, yeah, I just want to hear what you guys feel, what you guys thought about it. And yeah, we'll just go from there. So Warriors, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And yeah. Let's get into this thing. It's only the beginning. Later.